welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. <sighs> ah, welcome back. It's time again, ain't it? It's, look at, well, wouldn't you look at that? It's Friday. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get up on Friday. I'm the great and peaceful mystery. And I'm Jay. Today, just Jay. Just Jay. Good old Friday, Jay. How lovely. It's after Christmas, and I hope everyone out there had a wonderful uh, Christmas and wonderful holiday. Whatever holiday you celebrate. I think we've talked about it for like two weeks now. I don't know when Kwanzaa is, but I think it's around now. Why? Well, yeah, I think so. It sounds probably right. Okay. My Everybody, f- Christmas tradition I, in the England household. Uh, oh. oh. That would be a uh, Blake's hard cider. Uh, it is. Triple jam. 10, 16 in the morning. Can't drink all day if you don't if you don't start in the morning. I had a T-shirt that said that when we were river rats. River rats. So, Jay, can you guess what today's animal is? Mm-hmm. It is what? heavily Christmas themed. Well, I guessed reindeer, but you keep telling me no. It's not reindeer. I promise. It does have four legs. So it's an ungulate. No. Oh. Well, then I don't know. That would be a big hint if you understood what that word meant. Four legs, huh? I don't know. It is the sulcata tortoise. Is it? Yes. Oh, all right. Why is that Christmassy? It's not. I just lied to you. See how you are? I just thought we should talk about Tiki and Tala. You shouldn't lie on a Friday. I didn't lie. You just admitted to it. They're the most Christmassy animals. Yeah. They they like pour Christmas spirit out of them. Yeah. Like like a blast toys. A blast toys. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. The Pokemon? I know. Blastoise. All right. Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump. Blastoise. I get it. Now, Been would there. you I, I the like to hear some freaky facts about Salcata tortoises? I'm, I'm all for it. The Salcata tortoise is the third largest species of tortoise in the world. Hmm. But it is the largest non-island tortoise. Ah, the biggest land, mainland dweller. Yes. So, uh... There's this thing with island life that, you know, life either gets really big or really small, depending on what niches are available. Like, you see rats and tortoises and even some birds get huge. Mm-hmm. But, like, elephants and mammoths and some of those big mammals shrink really to really tiny because mm-hmm. it's kind of like an equalizing weight. Like, the ideal weight for, like, an island may be 200 pounds or 300 pounds. So, if you're 2,000, you shrink. If you're 40. You, you grow. Right. So, saccadas have done... They've gotten massive without that. They're just big boys. Mm -hmm. The next two biggest are the Galapagos is the largest, and then the Aldabas are after that. Mm. What about, like, no, no, never mind. That's a a turtle, Mm. not a tortoise. Leatherback sea turtles. That would be the largest turtle. Right. Remember, tortoises are turtles. But turtles aren't aren't tortoises. tortoises. Fish Fish are friends. Not food. In captivity, they can grow between... 120 to 200 pounds. Mine's on the way. Well, I it's, guess yours is too. Mm-hmm. This, they're trying. Uh, that can be a shell length of almost three and a half feet. Be sweet. Mm-hmm. They're wanna, big. They're I wanna, big. I'm going to get mine big enough to where when I'm an old man, I can just sit on it and ride around the yard. There is a Salkata tortoise with a Japanese gentleman that are both like in their 80s that walk around Japan all the time. I think I just seen that video on Facebook. They do their same chores every day. That's pretty sweet. That's the first thing is these guys get huge. Yeah. Uh, they huge. live really long. Big, big tortoise. Huge. The biggest. Huge. Biggest land tortoise. So another interesting fact is Salcata tortoises love warm weather. Oh, definitely. They these hate guys, this. Yeah. These guys are made for the heat. Yeah. So much for Christmas, huh? Yeah, I, I mean, Christmas. There's Christmas all over the world. There are Kwanzaa. Well, you think reindeer are going to cross the desert? No. No. It's got to be pulled by salcatas. Salcatas are Kwanzaa. Are Kwanzaa. Animals. They scream Kwanzaa. Tells you how much I know about Kwanzaa. 
Right. You didn't even know about the Salkatas. I know it's an African. Is it an African tradition? Pretty sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. I, it's not a fish. You're right. Yeah. It might be. It's not. We just haven't discovered it yet. The, it's also called the African spurred tortoises, and they get this from their osterderms on their legs, and mm-hmm. they're two big tusks the males get. Mm-hmm. They're not true tusks, but they grow these big shell spurs to fight and ram with each other. But for the warm climate, so these guys are from the African savanna, uh, specifically the Sahara Desert. They really enjoy. Uh, they love sunny climates. These are one of the few tortoises, because you see a lot of with people having tortoises in captivity, you see this mistake made a lot, is that they crank the heat too much for these tortoises. Mm-hmm. This isn't a species that that's likely to happen. Now, you can still cook them, don't get me wrong, because I've seen people have reptile enclosures like 180 degrees. Jesus. But a lot of... It's an oven. Yeah, but a lot of people suggest a sunspot, or like a heat spot in their enclosures around 105 to 115. Mm-hmm. And they can kind of pick whether they want to be directly in it or you know move off to the side or whatever. Yeah. But even though some kind of tortoises don't thrive in cold climates, they can actually handle relatively cold temperatures for short periods of time. Hmm. They can tolerate temperatures as low as 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's good to know. But at that point, they can start developing respiratory issues very quickly. Yeah. Uh, this is more as a survival tactic because in the desert, if they're not deep in their burrows, they get caught outside. They can The temperature drops dramatically in the desert because there's nothing there holding heat. Right, yeah. Anything? Yeah, any questions? These are pretty amazing, wonderful animals. So another part of Salcata tortoises is, uh, fact number three, is they have curled margins. What's margins? The edges of their shell, where they have like, oh, yeah. little points, yep. will actually start curling up as they get older. Yep. And that's to give them more room. So Because as they get bigger, they don't need as much protection from predators. Right, yeah. You know, there's not a lot in Africa besides maybe... A lion right, that can a eat a 150 pound tortoise. Maybe a hippo. A hippo. I mean, it would choke to death on it. True. Yeah. Hippos just kind of swallow things. They do eat some meat sometimes, but just kind of swallow it. Right. And they'd have to get out on the land to get them, anyways. Fact number four the Salcata tortoise can live well over 100 years. Yeah. Now, people mistakenly believe you can tell a tortoise's age by the grooves in their shell. That's not quite accurate. You know, it's okay. clusters of grooves, and you got to really understand how to read them. Mm. It's like reading Braille. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't really work for captive animals. Okay. Oh, okay. It's different than nature. Yeah, because, you you know, in the winter times, wherever they're at, it's harder normally right. in the summer. So the growth rings, you see a change in thickness. Right. And that's how you kind of tell. So it's pairs. So you're like, oh, summer, winter. Yeah. Sum- yeah. In, in captivity, it's all the nice, same. you know, constantly. Yeah. And they have a constant source of food, so it's really right, like yeah. one big ring. Uh, like I said, they can live to be 100 years or older. They are one of the longest-lived animals. There's only a few. Uh, there's a handful of animals that live longer than them, like bowhead whales and Greenland, Greenland sharks. sharks. Yep. Uh, and the, in the wild, they tend to live a lot shorter life spans. Shorter? Shorter lifespans. Okay. Uh, mostly because of predators. Oh, it makes sense. Breeding competition and that stuff. Most old Salcatas die from being flipped on their back during breeding season. <sighs> what a way to go. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, it's argued that the oldest living tortoise is actually a Salcata and not George. Who's George? A, uh, he's either a Deldabra or a Galapagos. Hmm. That he was brought to... He's still in Europe, but he was brought as like a hatchling... From the Galapagos Islands. Oh, and he's still there. Yeah, he's like 181 years old. So what? Darwin brought him himself? I don't think so. Maybe I don't. I don't know when Darwin have. went there. Yeah, me either. He probably made it all up, anyways. <laughs> Wrong show. But there's a Salcata tortoise that may be 200, 212. Nah, that's nuts. But that's argued heavily. Yeah. Uh, Salcata tortoises have extremely. Strong bodies. Oh, yep. Yes, they do. People underestimate these guys' strength. They are bulldozers. They dig humongous burrows, big enough for stuff like lions and hyenas to use as cover as well as these guys. Uh, They're little bulldozers. I've seen, and we've talked about it on shows, I'm sure, before. There was a rescue group that had like a really big sulcata turned into them, like a humane society. Yeah. They didn't know what to do with it. They put it in the bathroom and like locked it in there. 
keep in mind, it's probably an 80 pound turtle, 90 pound turtle. And they just hear ungodly noise and they open up the door and it's gone. But it has completely removed the toilet from the ground. It has ripped the sink wires or the sink hosing out of the wall. And there's just this perfect, like, cartoony hole yeah. in the wall. Just the side where of the it shell. it went through. Yeah. Because they were just little bulldozers and it was gone. Yep. They're like, well, I get how it got out. And every year, at least here in Ohio, I see salcados that are loose. People All find the time. Because yeah. people underestimate when they get a little bigger. That, how strong they actually are. And how fast they can dig and how fast they can move. Yeah. You get this image of tortoises don't move quick. They're My little constant. salcada can move pretty fast. But no. big salcadas can move pretty fast. Oh, yeah. When they want to go, they go. They go. Seen it. I used to put mine out in the garage once and it was doing laps. She was like excited. Laps. You know, she was. She was doing big circles, checking everything out. Big, big rounds. So it's fact number six. Sakata tortoises are nosy lovers. Nosy lovers, huh? Yeah. When a Sakata tortoise mates, it's a nosy affair, similar to mating cats. Things get very intense. There are plenty of groaning, grunting, and shell banging. Jeez. Uh, sometimes they have cur- their curved margins in older males are found lodged inside of females' shells. Ooh, that don't sound good. They're very rough. Sounds like it. But yeah, male uh, male tortoises spend a significant portion of their active phase seeking out partners. Uh, and like, there's a couple guys I see in Arizona that I follow that have like colonies of salcata tortoises. Right. Yeah. And it's not uncommon for their males to go underground for weeks and not mm. come up. They don't need to, you know, so they'll go in these rest periods and then they'll, then the next two weeks after that, they'll be super active. They're building up their mojo. Yeah. Uh, so, but a lot of these guys nuzzle like mammals. Okay. Where they rub noses and faces together. Yeah. As like a sign of what you courting, courtship, courting, uh, relate like affection. Yeah. They're reptiles. So it's a very different emotion. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle is reptiles are still intelligent and still have their version of emotions. Ain't it's like just very ours. different than mammals. Yeah. Ain't like ours. I got to take a drink. Enjoy your uh, Blake's hard cider. Christmas beer. A salcata tortoise's beak can be overgrown. Oh, no. So this is a problem, and this is one you'll have to start watching out for, Jay, with how big Tiki's getting. Okay. Is their beak constantly grows, mm. and they have extremely rough edges to them. Uh, for cutting through like fibrous plants and stuff like that, yeah, kind of have an extremely hard bite. What do they need? Like a like wood to chew on to trim it down. A lot of people use calcium blocks or cuttlefish bones, mm. uh, because it gives them first off a good chunk of calcium, because that's where a lot of tortoises run into problems is they their shells uncalcify, and then it also kind of wears that beak down. Like rodents and stuff, their beaks constantly growing because in the wild they need it to constantly grow because they're constantly eating very tough vegetation. Right, yeah. But yeah, there's only so much to choose from in the desert. <laughs> you gotta pick. You can't be picky. Wonder if I bet Selkot has dug out the pyramids, like the underground tunnels under the pyramids. That's that's my next fact. <laughs> oh, dang it, Selkot has built the pyramids. Yep, I would believe they it. were there. They were there, definitely. Actually, I wonder if there's a cot around that's seen it being built. We just ask them. Mm, you know, Elon Musk's uh It'd probably be like the size of this room. What, the pyramid? No, the tortoise that lived to see the pyramids. Oh, built. yeah. It's just still alive. Mm-hmm. It's underground somewhere. He built Darren Kuyu. Underground. Probably in Darren Kuyu. It probably is the Potbelly Hill. Yep. That's it. No, that's uh, that's Gobekli Tepe. It's probably Gobekli Tepe. Yeah, those are all Salkata homes. <laughs> Salkatas have three fundamental sensory organs. Can you guess them? Uh, Vision. Ooh, okay. Taste. Yeah. And smell. Yeah. Yeah. They don't I mean, have you, ears. Had, you only had a couple to pick from. So. Right, yeah. Well, I know they can't feel nothing because they're... Surprisingly, Selkatas have an extremely keen sense of sight. I could believe that. It's very rare for turtles. Yeah. I could believe it. Mine's always watching everything. Yeah. And everything. they can actually see they have a... As far as reptiles and turtles specifically go... They have a, a, the ability to differentiate colors very well, hmm. long distance viewing. They don't have binocular vision or anything like that, like a no, bird. Right. But they can see quite long distances. Yeah. And you see that with people that have like large sulcatas in big enclosures, and they'll be 100 feet away. And the sulcata oh. will see them and oh, start running toward them because then it's food time. And they're very food motivated yeah. animals. And that comes from their harsh environment. You know, foods when it's not available often, 
Yeah, that's more animals that are right. much more food ava- uh, motivated. Uh, but both taste and smell help these tortoises search for food, observe the presence of sexual partners, and notice threats or dangers. They, As far as reptiles go, they have a pretty good sense of smell and a pretty developed sense of taste. Hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of reptiles don't have any kind of real sense of taste. Yeah. They just stick their forked tongue out. And, uh, and that can be a problem for sulcatas in captivity. Okay. Because you know it, but for everybody at home, uh, th- these guys being desert animals, their digestive system is extremely developed to go against, like, to pull every bit of nutrients. Right. So unlike most other tortoises, they can't really have fruit. They can't really have anything else like that. Now, most other tortoises eat insects. Yeah. You can't give us all caught insects. Mine got some once. Well, it was on accident. You yeah. didn't give it insects. That's no. different. And people feel, feed them like mealworms and stuff. Yeah. Because they will, their shell will outgrow their body. Gotcha. Because they'll go into hyperdrive. Too, too much yeah, nutrients. Their digestive system will pull everything yeah. out. Well, I found mine. Uh, we had a bunch of like little hornets, you know, that you know the little yellow jackets. Yeah. Well, there was a nest outside my one door, and they were working their way into the house. So I went out, you know, sprayed the nest, whatever. But the ones inside ended up dying. But they, you know, they fall down against the wall and the carpet. That little area, you know, just up against the door. You don't really see them. But I was going through, and I seen her in her pen. I used to just let her out, run around downstairs. Well, yeah, she was going through, and she was finding all the dead hornets and eating see, them. Really good sense of smell, and, taste, and even the little ladybug like, things, the little aphid, the mm-hmm. orange ones. She was eating those too. And because uh, I seen it in their poop, I seen the little ladybug. Thing. I'm like, oh. but I'm like, wait, it's in her poop. And then I seen a hornet or the yellow jacket like halt skin, and I'm like, oh no, but she's fine. So here's fact number nine. So oh. cotta tortoises can burrow through walls, which oh, yeah. I kind of mentioned earlier. Right, yeah. But just to really kind of bring home that point of when these guys get going in direction, they don't stop. And uh, they can't they're very unbe- stop. They're very unbothered by like a lot of predators. Like I said, when they get big, no, there's not a lot that can mess with them. Right. Especially when they, they curl up so fast. Yeah, hyenas, I guess probably a, a leopard really could if it really wanted to but yeah if it was desperate i think they it, like, it's desperate you know any animal you know right wild dogs will pull it like will sit there and yeah or try to work it out but they lock into their shell so tight oh yeah and their front part of their arms are so armored and like pointy and, yeah yeah especially when they get big like that's inches of just keratin right you yeah. know it's there's nothing there there's no nerves there's no blood it's like fingernails yeah just you know several inches thick right yeah and sharp all right my last one for you Okay, fact number 10. Freaky fact of the sulcata number 10. Mm-hmm. Sulcata tortoises cry when they're sick. Oh. So sulcatas are also known as the crying tortoise. Mm, didn't know that. So when we first got Tiki, which is your tortoise. And she had that little wheeze? She had a wheeze and she was crying. She was crying? Constantly. I, I don't remember that. Well, no, I it was. Oh, when you had her. When I had her. This when you first time, rescued when her. I, yeah, when I first rescued her. Uh. And it's, but they can cry also, just sometimes they're also called crying tortoises because sometimes they just will it's well sad. up. Yeah. Uh, but that's a sign of respiratory distress. Oh, okay. But when they start pouring and they wheeze, but they also huff, they don't have vocal cords. Yeah. So when they're making noises, it always kind of sounds oh, yeah. like a wheeze. Psst. They make that a lot. And like, Especially like, if you scare them. I can't em. do it. Oh. But they hiss, you know, like you're yeah. saying they hiss, but they, it's like a suck in noise. They do too. Huh. I don't think I've really noticed that yet. I don't know if yours has ever done it. Yeah, I've never heard it. Tala does it, but she does it when she gets excited. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Me and Jay both have sulcata tortoises, if I think I mentioned earlier. If you haven't figured that out yet. And I just, uh, yeah, I think we just have females, and we want to get uh, a male, an, an Indian star tortoise to Ooh, crossbreed them. That'd be neat. I'd be, I'd let him over. <laughs> but no, that's the sulcata tortoise. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. They my my PSA about sulcatas, they are cheap, and they are everywhere. Do not buy one. Why? If you want a tortoise, get a Russian, a Russian tortoise. They're mean though. They're not mean. Yeah, uh-huh. they're mean to other tortoises. See, they're, they're very food motivated. See, mean. But no, seriously, sulcatas are a longer than your life commitment. They get humongous, and I cannot tell you like there's a reptile rescue here in Ohio. And they probably have 60 sulcatas. Jeez. And they don't have anything to do with Like, they're going to have to, they haven't, but they're going to have to start putting them down or something. Why? Because they can't feed them. Oh. You're talking about hundreds of pounds of food a week. It's grass. 
Yeah, but it's winter. You still got to pay to get it. Oh, yeah. But it's really a problem right now in the U.S. with Because reptile shows, you can get them for like 60 bucks. So they're one of the cheapest reptiles you can buy at a reptile show. Mm. And they give you, and I've seen it, I've seen it, where they give you no direction. Nope, just here they you just, go. Here's a tortoise. Yep. So if you really want a tortoise or a, a, a land turtle, box turtles, like Chinese box turtles are a good option. Uh, Russian tortoises are another good affordable option. Hingeback tortoises. There's a couple species that stay very small, like Russians and hingebacks and box turtles stay like iPad sized. Oh, okay. So five pounds, you know, kind yeah. of max. Well, they're hyper friendly and you can give them a varied diet. That's the other thing with a lot of people make mistakes with salcadas is their diet is very strict. Yeah. They have to be really hot and their diet is very strict. Russians are happy at room temperature. You know, they're a northern species of tortoise. They're a lot. If anybody's thinking about getting a tortoise, get a Russian. They're cheap. They You don't have to have a crazy heat lamp. And you can feed them kind of whatever you want. Like a lot of Russian tortoises get table scraps. Mm-hmm. That's fine because you need a little bit of protein. Like if you have cooked chicken, like you have a yeah. little bit extra, they can eat some of that. Your extra fruits and veggies, they eat that. Where salcadas, it's very strictly right. a lot of greens. And roughage. And some flowers. And that's about as sugary as they can handle it. Yeah. Or she likes dandelions. Oh, yeah. I remember the neighbor. So we we have neighbor kids. Uh, and they'll come over every year. They pick so many dandelions for the tortoise. They just devour them. Mm-hmm. It's the one time she was literally pooping yellow for like a week. It's a lot. Yeah. But she was so happy. And the girls, the little neighbor girls love doing it. Oh, yeah. Because they'll just hand feed her. But that's it. The Cotta Tortoise. That's my PSA. Don't buy one unless you understand your commitment to them. It's a generational thing. Get a Russian tortoise. They only have to be like 20, and they're a lot friendlier. So it kind of takes forever to like warm up to somebody. Yeah, but once they do, it's just I, as, they're sweeter than sugar. I don't, I wouldn't. Okay. I have been the great peaceful mystery. And I'm Jay. Remember, guys, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah. Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Christmas, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. I just, I just seen, oh, what is the... Festivus? What is the candles for Hanukkah called? Menorah. I just seen a menorah today. Oh, or not wow. today, yesterday in Ada. Wow. Which is exciting because we just don't have, we, we live nowhere, Ohio. Yeah. There's not a lot of cultural diversity. Not really. But it was exciting because it was in the window. I like Neat. I, neat. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Freaky Fat on a Friday. If you want to help the podcast grow, Remember to share and give it a five-star review.